A Chinese spacecraft has returned to Earth with the first samples from the moon in more than 40 years. The Chang'e uh, 5 spent three weeks in space sampling rocks and soil. The capsule carrying the samples gathered by the uncrewed craft touched down in the northern region of Inner Mongolia around five hours ago. Scientists hope that the samples will help them understand the structure and history of the moon. And as you can see, a Chinese flag was planted near the capsule once it was located. Well, let's get more on this with the science journalist, Dr. Ken Kremer, who joins us live now. If you think about it, it's 40 years since America Apollo, since the Soviet lunar missions brought their samples home. How big a deal is what's happened with this Chinese capsule? Well, this is a real big deal, and thank you for having me on. It's a real big deal because it hasn't been done in 40 years. China is the, only the third country in the, in the world to accomplish this task, and we want to get back to the moon. And so what the Chinese have demonstrated is a great, um, a great deal of technology, a great advance in their technological capabilities to be able to do this is only the third country. So it's a fantastic achievement for the Chinese. They landed rovers on the moon and they had orbiters, and now they brought a sample back just landed on Earth about five hours ago, and they located the capsule. And so the next thing will be to, to bring it back to a receiving facility and open it up. And they hope it to get about two kilograms or so. Now, is, is that a lot to ex explain? And then what can you oh. learn from, from this, these, these samples? Yes, you can do a lot. I'm a chemist. <laughs> <laughs> and from the pharmaceutical industry, in fact. So um, you can do a tremendous amount with a very small amount of material. And um, so they don't need tons of material to do a lot of science. These samples are also very interesting because they're from a different spot where Apollo went and the lunar probes from the Soviet Union went. And it's also what we believe is a younger spot, maybe about a billion years old instead of three to four billion years old. So we're going to learn about a lot about the evolution of the solar system from these samples. We learned a lot from Apollo. But there were older samples, and so we need to get different samples from different time periods to fill in that gap of our knowledge of the, the Earth-Moon system and how did the solar system form. And uh, tell me, you've been at the Sp Kennedy Space Center all day setting up for, a, for yes. a launch tomorrow. What was the mood there like that China was the, the country to get, achieve something so incredible like this? And do you think there's going to be cooperation between the different nations when it comes to learning what we can from these, these samples? Well, I can tell you there's a lot of people here very interested in going back to the moon. I mean, I, I was a teenager when we first went to the moon, and we should have never stopped going back to the moon. So now the United States has Project Artemis under the current administration with uh, Administrator Bridenstine, and we're pushing hard to that. We actually saw the second stage of the SLS moon rocket for the Artemis One mission, which will be an unmanned mission going to the moon, circling around the moon around the end of next year. So yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot of excitement. So samples came back from the moon today, and the U.S. rocket that's going to take people back to the moon, we saw a portion of that arrive at the Kennedy Space Center today. So yeah, there's just tremendous excitement. And I hope the new administration will continue on that path. And I can say Europe has a big involvement in that. ESA, the European Space Agency, you know, they're building part of the Orion capsule to send people. And so European astronauts are going to be part of that. And it is very international. You know, we have the International Space Station. And there's a Japanese astronaut on that. And on the next crew mission is going to be a European astronaut uh, from France, I believe. So there's a lot of international cooperation. And that's what we need to cut the cost. And your enthusiasm is contagious. Brilliant to speak to you, Dr. Ken Kramer, who also runs the SpaceUpClose.com website. I think it's uh, worthy of a plug. Thank you so much for your time. Oh, thank you very much.